Good day fellow investors, welcome to the stock market news with a long-term fundamental twist. My name is Sven Karlin, I have been successfully investing for almost 20 years now. Yes, I'm that old. And I have been a finance and accounting professor at the University of Amsterdam. I have a PhD on investing risk. And now I'm an independent researcher doing research on businesses and sharing my thoughts on YouTube. Two years ago, one and a half year ago, I gave my thoughts, I shared my thoughts on canopy growth and the cannabis sector because it was really required for me to do that. And my conclusion wasn't positive. So I'm going to give you an overview of what I did, what was the consequence of it and how it developed now that cannabis stocks are crashing. Then we'll also discuss the Bitcoin as Ray Dalio discussed how there is a currency imminent collapse. Is Bitcoin the answer to it? I'll give you a bullish thesis on Bitcoin and then you will see how that fits your investing strategy risk and reward and why I'm not going to invest in Bitcoin. I might look like a fool for the next 5-10 years but it's simply not my strategy. However, there is a very strong bullish case behind it. So let's start. So I analyzed canopy growth in Aurora Cannabis in April of 2018. I was even contacted by investor relations because of my conclusions to have a chat with them, but then it's diluted. I didn't manage to catch them and they were going public on the New York Stock Exchange and uh, simply the chat didn't go through and I also didn't have any interest in discussing it with them. But I looked like a fool for exactly a year and a half. I discussed Canopy growth at $30 per share it went to 60, 60 and something. So everybody that came on my channel saw, oh, look at this idiot. He said Canopy Grow is a tomato business when it was at 30 and now it is at 60. And it lasted for a year and a half and now the stock is at 20. What did I say in my video? Well, to sum up, I said we have a commoditized market with much lower prices, management that's trying to make money in any way for themselves, not for shareholders, no moat, same like tomatoes or broccoli, huge dilution in all forms, a perfect example of misaligned interest with shareholders. They were diluting the hell out of all other shareholders. Unreasonable growth projections that might or might not happen. So I said that it's like tomato producing and uh, everybody attacked me. Everybody said, okay, Sven, you are crazy. Then I looked for like a fool for a year and a half. But what is the conclusion? When you have an unsustainable business model, a business model that's selling dreams and there is plenty of money, then of course the management made a lot of money by selling those dreams, diluting shareholders, getting share options, selling stocks, and that's how the business works. Somebody gets rich. Unfortunately, those that invest hoping that they own a great business or hoping that they will make quickly some more money based on greed or based on fear of missing out on the biggest new era of the biggest new business model on the biggest new market that's coming, they unfortunately lose their money very, very fastly. It's simply greed. And if a risk doesn't materialize, it doesn't mean it isn't there. If we look at the S&P 500, it's also very risky. The greed index is extremely greedy. Everybody rushes into index funds. And just a year ago, it was extreme fear because people were scared that the S&P 500 will crash because it was down, what, 15 to 20 percent. However, going back to fear and greed, I think I find it very difficult to understand why people put their money or why people like to bet on those gambles because yes, it is exciting. But then again, former Uber CEO sold more than 700 million in stocks on his great uh, idea and investment. So he made his 700 million. That's enough for a lifetime. And he was protected. You investing in Uber or similar stocks, you might not have the same fate. Another stock that I got so many messages, so Sven, please analyze it, analyze it, analyze it. And I didn't analyze it because I didn't want to bother with it because I knew what the story was, was beyond meat. It went public, explosion upwards, and then it's just simply slowly coming back to where it was. So 
The thing is that people are investing in things that sell dreams and don't have earnings and that's called the greater fool investing theory because you need to find a greater fool to whom you're going to sell that stock to make money, not from earnings. Similar story was the dot-com bubble in the 2000s, the Nasdaq index went almost to 5000 points, it took 13-14 years to reach that level again. And yes, they were all right, the internet was go has changed the world, but few made money from 2000. Five years ago, there was the 3D system bubbles. Everything was will be printed by 3D printers, right? Then we had, we will use drones, uh, cameras, everybody will have a drone, uh, everything will be transported by drones, GoPro and cameras and blah, blah, blah. Well, another bubble that blew up. Now, investing in something that everybody will be using is always a hot story, is always a hot story easy to sell. The next hot story that was a hot story two years ago, it's now hotter, it was cool a year ago, is Bitcoin. So, I've made a video on Dalio's view on an imminent currency debasement over the next 10 years. And I got a lot of messages asking me, okay, whether the Bitcoin is the answer as an asset class to protect yourself from what's going to happen to currencies, from what's going to happen to economies. And well, the economics, the fundamentals of the Bitcoin are very, very interesting. So let me first share the bullish thesis for Bitcoin and then I'll tell you why I will or will not put my money into this. So the supply of Bitcoin is currently 18 million. 160 billion market cap at the current price it will go up to 21 million over the next year so slow slow inflation with a hard cap so this occurs in form of supply shocks in the mining block reward and is exponentially decreasing manner as such so we can say that the bitcoin has a limited supply so inflation rate will be zero and it also has a cost of production like other metals have. And uh, a week ago it was 7,490 7, per Bitcoin in electricity costs to mine a single Bitcoin. So it's decentralized, no government or third party owns the network. It's also fungible and divis divisible in eight decimal points. Censorship, so in Argentina it trades at a premium because people are putting their money into Bitcoins to protect themselves from what's going on there in Argentina. It's more and more difficult to mine, as we have said. So it gets provable scarcity, something limited, something decentralized. So it's a very, very good story. But why am I not going to put my money in it? Because I think I can do better than the Bitcoin over the long term by investing in businesses that compound over the long term, that produce something. However, if I put it in a Ray Dalio all-weather portfolio where you simply invest in all asset classes, this could be part of it. You say, okay, I'm investing in Bitcoin, 5% of my portfolio. When it becomes 7, I bring it down to 5. When it becomes 3, I bring it up to 5%. And in such a way, you might get the yield, you might trade it, you might do something. But then again, all-weather is not about maximizing portfolio returns, it's just about stabilizing portfolio returns. I am focused on maximizing portfolio returns, but by investing in things that have unlimited upside. If Bitcoin stabilizes and gives you just protection against inflation, then you know the upside is limited. So these are my thoughts. You see how what fits you. I'm not saying this could cannot go to 60, it absolutely can go to 60,000. I might look again like a fool for not investing in Bitcoin for the next 2, 5, 10 years. I probably will. We'll see depending on the supply and demand and what people believe. But I don't like to invest in what people believe. I like to invest in what people need and I'm, I know they will need it. And that's the risk reward I'm not going to accept. So what will happen? I have absolutely no idea with Bitcoin and uh, it could be the fundamentals are there. Depends on what are people going to believe and where they are going to put their money. Not a sufficient reason to invest for me. 
Thank you for watching. Look forward to your comments. Look at what I do in the description of the video below. You have all the links for my stock market research platform where we look for businesses that are going to deliver returns forever and infinite returns, hopefully. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.